Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com. It is today in sports betting, the MLB version. Happy Saturday, everybody. You made it through another week and it is Saturday, man. Chock full of sports today. All of a sudden, it's a lot of stuff to bet on. You got your baseball, you got your NBA, you got your uh, you got your UFC, you got hockey. Hey man, here's a guy golf. who's you got you got golf. Here's a guy who's an expert on all of it. Uh, pretty much the best better in the world at all of those sports. It's Scott Reichel. What's up, bud? Uh, doing pretty well. Uh, I know that baseball. Wait, how's that for, how's wait, that wait, wait, some pressure. Wait, add some pressure on uh, today's on today's uh, leans and picks. Uh, but baseball yesterday was pretty good. Uh, don't really have any complaints about that. We saw through the decoy in the Rockies Mariners game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, trying uh, to give it the old okie doke is what they were doing there, Scott. We yeah, I, I, spl- I split with the first five unders between Cleveland and. Uh, Cincinnati. I think Cleveland's the better uh, first five under team as Cincinnati scored six runs in the second inning yesterday against Milwaukee. But Cleveland, uh, it was actually hilarious because the White Sox had like first and third, no uh, one out in the bottom of the first. The Indians had bases loaded in the top of the second. Then I think the White Sox had bases loaded in the in the bottom of the third, and they combined for one run over those three innings. It was one nothing going into the sixth. I'm like, yeah, that looks about right. You dodged the bullet on that one the whole way through, didn't you? I'm like that. Uh, no, but then I re- I remember the Indians were playing, and I'm like, oh yeah, that yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. And uh, meanwhile, Cincinnati uh, killed Milwaukee. But if going through the other matchups, uh, I believe you owe me an apology uh, because I said uh, that under in the Red Sox Toronto game, and you were giving me a hard time about it. How'd that end up, Scott? Uh, pretty sure it went under. There you go. All right. Did it not go under? Because I know that they had like nine combined runs going into the bottom and going into the ninth, and I assume that it went under. Oh, It'd be kind of ironic if Toronto scored like three runs at the top of the ninth. No, you're fine, dude. I'm just yanking your chain. It was five three. Oh yeah. Well, I was saying that I like I thought the under was there, and I said until Toronto scores runs, give me the under five and a half in the team total, and they still can't score. And Weber was terrible again, and they still couldn't score. They gave yeah. They like two runs. This Toronto team just stinks. Yeah, it's a uh, you know maybe maybe they should have some. Uh... Maybe they should have some major league son, some sons of better major league players. The only thing I know is that if you have not scored six runs or more since opening day, you should not be having a team total of five and a half. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, good enough. Uh, so Scott, Yankees uh, lose one to nothing. Yeah. Now they've dropped two straight. They don't. They had but, two more hits than the two of us combined. The, the good news is. Uh, nobody in that division wants to win it besides the Yankees. Well, they got a doubleheader today against Tampa, so it's actually a decently important day because if Tampa – I don't want to say – it's still very early, so I'm not going to say that Tampa's done for if they get swept in these two games. It's not looking good. And if you get nowadays with uh, each division getting two playoff teams guaranteed Mm – I'm not saying – the Yankees are almost a lot to make the playoffs anyway, but – you can pretty much just say sayonara if they end up just sweeping this these two games. You know they're going to finish top two in the division. It's not even uh, a discussion, honestly. Yeah, they're not. They're not going to be overtaken by the Baltimore Orioles. The know. Orioles have fallen apart. The Red Sox are terrible. Toronto can't hit the ball. You are you're already basically down to your two teams. Yeah, the Orioles won last night. I mean, they're, they're you know they're yeah they uh, Tommy Malone. Tommy Malone, Jeez. what a performance! You know that pretty much sums up our our week baseball week by the fact that Tommy Malone pitched well. He was, uh, yes, it's he kind was, of a shame. It's it's kind of, it's the funny part about baseball though, because we both would have leaned to the over, but instead sure. we got the team total over. Yeah, so the Nationals got shut out, but your full game over cashed in like the sixth inning. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Anibal wow. Sanchez was terrible. Tommy Malone was dealing. Mm-hmm. Like I, I texted you like in the second inning and went, I think we're in trouble. You, you tell me Malone's dealing, and I'm thinking just just get to the bullpen, and the bullpen came in. They still couldn't score. I'm like, all right, yeah. that's uh. Yeah, I think I'm just going to ignore that one. Yeah, not good. My, my Royals win two in a row. Uh, break up the Royals. They pull within five and a half. Well, the huge sweat that I had was on the Pirates' first five, which I said that I liked against Detroit. That game was crazy throughout the entire game. That first five was nuts. It was like uh, it was like watching a Hagler-Hearns fight. It's Pittsburgh just... was up 5-1 going to the top of the fifth, and then they went down 6-5 in the fifth. And they scored two runs in the bottom of the fifth to, to lead 7-6 after five. So that was a huge sweat if you had Pittsburgh first five. But yeah. uh, they ended up winning. And then unfortunately, uh, uh, not even unfortunately, it, it, does that count as a bad – I don't even know how to describe it, but 
that the, Tigers, uh, you know, seventeen thirteen. Yeah, but they were up four in the ninth, and they gave up four runs just to win by four runs in extra innings anyway. Yeah, so pretty yeah, entertaining just, stuff. Just to blow your bullpen, and then the, uh, a great game out in Oakland. Uh, it was it was a late one. I don't know how many people stayed up to watch it, but it it went thirteen innings. Bit of a pitcher's uh, duel over there. What's that? Bit of a pitcher's duel over there. Yeah. Uh, well, compared compared to the Tigers and, and uh, Pirates, it certainly was. Yeah, they were a. Uh, they were they were one one and then they tied it two two and yeah it was a it was a great it was a fun game to watch too so it was a fun game to watch uh, a lot of fun in, uh, in in baseball so let's take a look at today's card shall we shall we? got a, got a well, more than full board as we got a couple of uh, we got two double headers uh, no just one double header okay and you got the Yankees playing too yeah yeah that's the only one all right so let's start with the uh, let's start with the Cleveland uh, Indians and the White Sox they're a battle in the uh, in the AL Central uh, Cleveland going to be the favorite here at uh, uh, plus uh, minus one twenty four, and nine. That one looked cheap to you. What's that? Does that one look cheap to you with, with Plessic on the mound after how good he was in his first start of the year? Because I didn't understand this line when I saw it. Yeah, Plesac was very good. Um, I know that Cleveland can hit, but their starting pitcher is significantly better in this matchup. Yeah, I think I think that, I think that's a good price. I think you're getting Plesac against uh, uh, Matt Foster. Cleveland, you're you're right. They are. Uh, that's a team. It's an under machine, buddy. Is what that is. They're averaging. Uh, they're averaging three point one, but they're only giving up two point one. So they've been pitching very well. I mean, that's I just for the. That that's just for the uh, the money line. If I, you know, I'm going back to first five under. You know, I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, you have to. You have to. Although I I do worry about Cleveland coming to life against uh, against Matt Foster. Um. Let's see. Just for. Uh, let's see what our first five is there. My should be around four, four and a half. Probably, I, I know the total's at nine. So, so it should, in in real life, it should be five, but I guarantee you they dropped it to four and a half. That's what I'm saying. There's no uh, based on how yeah. the Indians have played, it's going to be four and a half. Yeah, and you're and you're and you're juiced and you're juiced under at minus one fifteen. So uh, it works for me until and once again until they beat me, then they beat me. Like for example, Cincinnati lost the first five under yesterday, so right. I'm not taking the first five under today. But Cleveland continues to cash it, so I'm going to keep playing it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's take a look at that uh, Yankees uh, Tampa game. That is the uh, first game of the doubleheader, kind of a uh, a matchup of of, the, of aces there, if you will. Garrett Cole goes against Tyler Glass now um, for the Tampa Bay Rays, and uh, Yankees minus one forty nine plus one thirty eight for Tampa. You're not a fan of the fun five and a half total in a seven inning game. Five and a half is your total right it's, there. I know it's a seven inning game, but it's the first time I've ever seen a number lower than six and a half in my lifetime. There might have been one six, maybe like yeah. when the Grum was pitching against Scherzer, maybe like yeah, two years ago. It's like our Kershaw game, a lot of times. Five there. and a half is uncharted yeah. territory for baseball. It, it's nuts. It's uh, it's pretty. It's pretty nuts indeed. I think I still have to lean to the under. You got seven oh. inning. You got seven innings, so both starters should pitch the bulk. Both teams combined for one run yesterday, but mostly because of the fact that both starters are absolute aces. I, I think I'd have to lean to the under. Yeah, Glasnow hasn't been fantastic this season. But you know that he has the great stuff to potentially shut down the Yankees for five, six innings. You think they can shut down the Yankees two days in a row, bud? The truth is that I think it's more about consistency and current form. And the issue I have with the Yankees, even you though know, their lineup is really good, Sanchez can't hit, Torres can't hit, Hicks can't hit, they're playing every day. And none of those three have an average above, like, 130. Well, So okay. you, a third of their lineup's been useless. Okay, all of those guys can hit. They can. I'm and just they saying. Have hit. As of right now, people are talking about the Yankees' lineup is so good, and I know that they score a lot, a lot of runs, but you're mostly just looking at Judge and Stanton, and you look at DJ LeMayu as well, who is just – Yeah, a monster. Just a ridiculous hitter. He's batting over 400. But then you look at some of these other guys in the lineup. A third of the lineup can't hit. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay the, I'm just gonna lay the wood here. I don't care. Uh, that's. I don't know if I like 160. I, I think 160 because the I, thing about I the got, Yankees, I got 149, dude. I got 149. I see the line went up to roughly minus 160. I'm looking at it right now, literally. Okay. Like I'm, making, I'm making a bet right now. Okay. Well, uh, according to some other books, I see 160. So I guess you're getting a good right. deal on that right now at minus 140 something. But shop, shop around, kids. Well, that's why I don't. I don't ever think. I think I'd lean to the under six because I could find it. But am I? 
Truth is, I don't know. I don't even know if I ever want to play double headers. The seven inning thing is so dumb. I don't know if I want to get involved. Okay, fair enough. Um, I hate. I, do you like these seven inning stuff? Because I hate it. Uh, oh, I you know, know why they're doing it because they're yeah. trying to the game to go faster because they need to actually get the games through. I. It's just. It feels such. It feels like American high school ball? softball. Like you're just making up rules as you go. Like I, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Uh, you know, this is a this is a uh, this is a year for all the old traditionalists to sit out of baseball. I used to play seven innings back in like fifth grade. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like American Legion or something or something like that, like little league. The little league, like yeah, it's it is what eh, it's. The, I just can't get behind it. I, I just can't. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the mercy rule. I will lean to the under though if I had to lean right. anywhere because I think both starting pitchers are very solid and both lineups fell asleep yesterday. But I know Tampa's lineup's been asleep all year long. Fair enough. I'm gonna take I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Yankees lane my minus one forty nine. I think that's the best price you're gonna get on Cole all year. Okay. Uh very close to it. And I'm gonna take it I'm gonna take advantage. It's on sale, buddy. It's on sale. I can't say no. So uh here are these guys. I think they're still scoring runs up there at uh, uh in Pittsburgh. Uh the Detroit Tigers and Pittsburgh Pirates, uh Pirates minus one twenty eight. Nine and a half is the number there as um it's, no, it's a Nova versus Holland. It's Nova, Ivan Nova versus Derek Holland. You know, Holland. Both pitchers who have been around which for what feels like 15 years. I was ready to write Holland off, buddy. I really he's, been, he's been more serviceable than I could have ever thought he was. He, the last start against Minnesota, he well, showed signs of regression. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he, looked good, he looked good against Milwaukee in that first start. And, uh, yeah, then against the Twins, he kind of uh, blew up, gave up four earned in five and two-thirds. Nova's been okay. But uh, this was my play of the day. So I personally got the over at nine, which, especially in today's extra innings, which they showed you in the Tigers Pirates game yesterday, you get extra innings, you could be seeing another like six runs. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. You know, there's a couple of, there's a couple of theories when it comes to playing uh, day games after a big uh, extra inning game. Theory number one is the one that you're going with that the bullpens are gassed. And it's going to be much easier to score runs because the arms are going to be tired. Theory number two is everybody is worn out. Everybody is, uh, is, is kind of like, if you will. And the, the games tend to not be very good or score very many runs. So I personally, on this one, I like the first five under. How about that? That's a bold play right there. But mm-hmm. I, the thing that's the thing that also I factor in is that even if the starters pitch well, these are what, two of the worst five bullpens in the entire league? Pittsburgh's number one on my list. I was going to say, yeah, Pittsburgh is for sure. It's Pittsburgh's hard to number say. one. Detroit, they have that one guy who tied the AL strikeout record. Alexander, I think, in the bullpen? Yeah, the guy that uh, struck out nine straight you're talking about? Yeah. Like, he's yeah. good. Other than that, I. I uh, good luck to you if you're aligned on the Tigers bullpen. But I do understand your point. But I I just got it at nine because I knew it was going to nine and a half. It was All a right. no brainer to go to nine and a half. So I just took it at nine. Four four extras. You automatically get a push minimum. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna play. <clears throat> it's a matter of both lineups woke up yesterday, and I think that they'll stay awake for another I don't know twelve to fifteen hours. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play first four under four and a half. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I respect the ballsiness of that play. Test out. I'm gonna test out my theory here. Yeah, you, you talk about Derek. You talk about Derek Holland and Ivan Nova playing an under. Uh, yeah, you, you, you that's the it. point though. Is that you can make the argument that one starter could implode, which is definitely possible. Right. Or both starters pitch five innings decently well, and then you got the bullpen shenanigans. So yeah, I think, I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of recipes for this game to go over. I'll be sitting on this one live. I guarantee you. Uh, I'll be watching this one live. As soon uh, as you see Nova come in out of the game, you're looking your chops at that point. Another day game of a game that went even longer uh, with relatively the same start time is uh, the Astros and the Athletics. A, a couple teams that uh, use a lot of guys out of their bullpen. Oakland Just some Mar- advice. Extra innings. Maybe you should bunt the guy to third base. You, you know, maybe, you know, you're in the 13th inning. Maybe you might want to consider around inning 11. Maybe you should try to get him to third base. But you know what? There's the inning there for the for the for the A's. He uh, hit a he hit a fly ball right field. Got him to th- got him to third base. The same point. So you got a guy at third base with one out. Still couldn't get him in. Loaded the yeah. Base but it, I'm talking about Houston. Houston has oh. this approach of just swinging away every time. 
Yeah. And, you know, when you have – what was it? It was two runs. It was – was the final score? It was 2-1 or it was 3-2? Three, 3-2. Two. Three, yeah, two. when you have two runs. It was 1-1 one, it was one, one in extras, and then they tied it at 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. And uh, then Oakland ended up winning it. Yeah, when you have one run in during extra innings, maybe you should try to bunt the guy to third base. On a well, hunch. And here's a uh, here's a piece of advice for for Dusty Baker. You know, I'm don't sorry. walk Robbie Grossman. They walked they walked Robbie Grossman to get to uh, and I can't the kid the kid's a rookie left hander. Um, and they they had a guy in third. They walked Robbie Grossman. Robbie Grossman, uh, who was the winning run, and put him on first base. And I uh, guess who scored the winning run, Scott? You want to take a shot at? I'm gonna go Robbie Grossman. Robbie Grossman, exactly right. So. Um, Dusty Baker is a cardinal rule in baseball. Never, ever, 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 ever put the winning run on first base, ever. And yet, there it was. So, yep. Uh, who do you like there? You got a, you got a choice? Uh, let me see who's pitch. I did, uh, I know it's Montas for uh, Oakland, and it is, uh, it's gonna be Valdez for it's former Valdez, yeah, for uh, for Houston. Um, I, really, I like it's really a tricky spot because Houston is don't they have, they have a losing record right now, right? Aren't they one game under? You should just drop three in a row there. Six and seven, friend. Yeah, they are one under. Uh, I, it's really tough because Houston's playing some terrible baseball, but I'm going to lean to Houston as an underdog here because truth is, I, once again, same thing I said with the Yankees. If, if, uh, the, under, if the underdog doesn't win this game, this division, uh, this might turn into a rout. Uh, Oakland's about to run away with it. If, they, they, if Houston, they sweep this series or even take two out of three – uh, Houston's got their work cut out for him. You know that's what I'm Nothing. saying. This is uh, this is a pretty important game for Houston. And even though it's early in the season, you make the argument, well, Houston still has the talent to do this and blah blah. I think you can agree. Oakland looks like the best team in the division by a wide margin. I do. Houston looks like they're going to hover around thirty and thirty all year long. They need something. They need to. They need to flip the switch. I don't. Uh, I, I don't really want to get involved in this game. I'm going. That's a complete to, pass for me. But at the end of the day, Montes, even though I like him as a pitcher, his yeah. pitch counts are a bit too high. He tends to walk guys. He tends to lead games in the fifth, sixth inning. Yeah. And I think Houston has a shot here as an underdog. So I'll leave him for the value. But I've sure. not. Yeah, that's it's one of those things where you, t- you take Houston plus one twenty eight. It's not. It's, it's not awful. Because you know their bats can wake up. They score six and they'll win the game. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Braves of Phillies. This is a uh, pretty close game on the board. Uh, Braves minus 109, Phillies minus 101. Uh, 10. 10 is the total there, Scott, as uh, Kyle Wright goes against Jake Arietta. Uh, yeah. There I you watched Arietta against the Yankees. He did not look as awful as I remember him. He actually looked somewhat decent. I'm not a fan of Wright. Philly won two out of three against the Yankees. I'll link to Philly. Yeah, I got I got to go I got to go Philly there. I just I I got to I, I hate I, that bullpen though so much. I thought about taking big Philly's first five. Yeah, I, that's that's I, that's what I'm thinking now also cuz I really dislike that Philly's bullpen. And Kyle Wright. The Hector Neris, but you shouldn't be closing games in baseball. Kyle Wright is so awful. And that's and that's an even money game, dude. That's a uh, first five is minus 110 on each side. I'm going to take the Phillies first five. Yeah, I agree with you. I'll take the Phillies. Okay. Uh, uh, Yankees and Rays game a numero deuce. I have to pass because I don't know who's pitching for the Yankees. Uh, is it still is it still TBA on that? I still see TBA. Uh, I've got what the hell? Uh, I've got King as listed as a starter right now. But King's a bullpen guy, so that means they're using an opener. Michael King, so they're gonna have a they're gonna have a bullpen game for their first game. That's the second game. Oh, so sorry, that is, that is the second game. You're right. That's a bold strategy there, Cotton. You could have nobody left after the first one. Well, the thing I think I think they're relying on Cole to go at least six innings in game one. Well, and I think Tampa Bay is going to go bullpen too. So that's the the with Jalen Beeks. So I I, I I don't know how I'm supposed to attack that game. No, live if you want to play it. Um, yes, maybe lean over. Maybe. Sure. Um, I'm not touching it. What do you What do you got? Seven? Yeah. Okay. I'll play. I'll play that. I mean, the Yankees. Unless you're a believer in the doubleheader split strategy, where you just take whoever loses game one and bet them to win game two. That's not. A th- I mean, it's it's not a thing, but a lot of people notice it. Yeah. I mean, well, because splits happen more often than anything. Correct. It, it's a thing, out. but it's not as frequent as people make it out to be. Right. Yes. Agreed. And yes, I I totally agree with that. Um, if you were going to bet it to start with, you want to bet a split. As far as an outcome goes, okay. 
But because one team wins the first one, you it's no. You immediately it, think other oh, win percentage just skyrocketed. From a mathematical standpoint, it doesn't work. That no, way. It, no, it, it's just the thing about double headers is that you don't really notice when one team sweeps it, but when they chop it, you notice it. Yeah, exactly. So it's more just a – it's a thing that seems more common than it is because – Collective recall, they call yeah, that, my friend. Yeah, that's the term I was looking for. Very good. Uh, all right, how about the Battle of the Beltway, game number two? This time it's personal. As you've got Baltimore going against uh, the Washington Nationals again. Again, if you didn't catch us, the, the, one of our, maybe our worst bet of the year so far is we had the Washington Nationals team total over five and a half. How many did they score yesterday, Scott? I can't remember. Same amount as the two of us. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I they, still like the play. If I'm going to get burned by Tommy Malone, I'm going to get burned by Tommy Malone. It, it, yeah, is, you, what it is. It happens. You, you fade Tommy Malone all year long and you take your chances. That's, that's it. Uh, the, thing about, the thing about this line, though, after such a terrible showing by Washington yesterday, you think they're worth laying minus 180, minus 190? Behind Austin Vaugh? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I guess I'm leaning Baltimore on principle, but of course I don't feel good betting Baltimore in any circumstance. You know, Austin Voth gave up uh, gave up two home runs and five innings in his only start so far this season. Too. Did you so, know that Austin Voth is a, not a great starting pitcher? Yeah, he gave him up to Toronto too, buddy. I th- I <laughs> think uh, there, of course there were probably two solo shots. Uh, that's going to be my guess. Yeah, he gave up he gave up three runs, two earned. Okay, the thing about Eshelman is that he's. He's not a great starter. He's not really an innings eater. Not yeah. terrible. Baltimore is significantly worse starters in their in their rotation. I'll tell you that much. You know the the Nats for all the for all the we, all the Indians the, all the trouble we've been giving the Indians about scoring runs. Nats have been worse. Well, I'm going to give them a little bit of a pass because Soto what, didn't exactly play for about seventy five percent of the season so far. Okay. All right. Well, they also lost Rendon, so they didn't they're not the same team as last year for the most part. Cleveland literally brought everybody back, and they still can't score. No, well, fair enough. Um, it just doesn't doesn't discount the fact that they still suck. I'm still leaning to Baltimore in this spot, but that's mostly because I don't know how you're supposed to lay 200 with where minus 180 with Voss. I'm not. I'm not laying 200 on on Austin Voss. No, that's I can't. Right. I can't do that. So I'll it's, lean to Baltimore. I'm thrilled about it. No, but for a price for a team that won 11 nothing yesterday, yeah, really not bad for a price. They shouldn't have won that game either. They should have yesterday. What the yeah. hell? 166, yeah. I'll take it. I'm not, I'm not laying a, I'm not laying a buck 80 on Austin both. Not happening. Um, mm-hmm. especially against, you know. Well, okay, there we go. Hey, how about the Twins and the Royals again, buddy? I don't know if I can go against your Royals. They're sizzling. <laughs> I, I can't believe I – yeah. I, Aren't I, they on fire? You lose six straight, you win two – you lose six straight, then you win two straight. You're cooking. You know, and Danny Duffy, he's actually actually, actually looked pretty he's good just, this season. Yeah. Going against uh, ex-Royal Jake Odorizzi. I actually like Odorizzi, though. I do, too. He really uh, had a pretty uh, solid uh, tenure with uh, Minnesota. Yeah. I didn't see coming. He's pitched, he's pitched very well. And he's, I watched uh, him on Tampa. I thought this guy's mediocre. Went to Minnesota and just became a solid pitcher. I'm not really sure what happened there, but, I mean, the Twins clearly have the pitching advantage in this matchup. It's not even close. Oh, that's not true. That's, I, no, that's, that's – I, I would call these pitchers – I would call these two pitchers very comparable. You th- you don't think that Odorizzi is a better pitcher than Daniel Duffy? I think he's I think he's slightly better. I know I don't. When you say when you say it's not even close, that's that's actually. I don't, I don't think it's that close. I think Duffy's had a pretty uh, couple of good starts in 2020. But if you're asking me who I'd rather have, I would take Odorizzi ten times out of ten. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll take you know what uh, Duffy's kind of had some hard luck this season. Still got a whip under one. Uh, you want to catch a price on the Royals? I I you know at some point this is going to be over. You know the two games. 137. You know, I'm gonna. I'm going back to the well, bud. I'm gonna. Having said all that, is, is still Minnesota is still the better team. Uh, you're getting a decent price on them. I'll lay. The, I'll lay the 148 on the Twins. Uh, I think I'll take the first five. Uh, uh, do I want to take the first five run line? Uh, this is once again this is a pass for me because I just don't see much value. But then again. A lot of right-handed boppers for, for Minnesota. This isn't – isn't, Yeah, then they kill lefties. That's the problem. Not, I not think I'll, go, I'll, I'll go with the first five run one. All right, good enough. Not a good, not a good matchup for a, for a left-handed pitcher, even, even Duffy having a decent year. Um, okay. Angels-Rangers. Uh, my Angels let me down for the first time yesterday. Uh, first time they haven't scored five or six runs in about a week and a half. 
And Trout home run on his birthday for the sixth for the sixth time in his career. True. Angels uh minus one forty two, Rangers plus one thirty two, or should one thirty one rather nine is the number there. Uh, I'm assuming with Sandoval versus Allard, we're just leaning to the over nine. Patrick, yeah, Patrick Sandoval goes against uh, Colby Allard. Um, both these guys have actually pitched pretty well this season, Scott. Both of them uh, made, a, made a start. They looked decent. The issue is that none of them are, eat, are innings eaters, so you're relying on a decent performance from the bullpen if you're going to actually go under. True, and that's uh, – and good luck there, although it, it worked out yesterday for Texas. Uh, man, this is a – what is it, a 6.05 start time in Texas? I'm going to be, you know, still in the hundreds down there. I'm winning over. Hard not to play the over here, bud. Hard not to play the over. I'll do it. I'll go with you. I'll just play the over nine with the – I see I see P. P Sandoval pitching, and it just makes me chuckle. Mm-hmm. I, think, I, think of, uh, I think of the panda out there throwing the ball, but, yeah, no. Well, yeah. Paul, Paul Blow, I feel like, would be a pretty entertaining pitcher. That's what I'm saying. You see him and uh, Bartolo Colon go against each other? That will be a fun time. Something about, that, something about those two boys I like. I'm not, I can't put my finger on what it is. <laughs> but, uh, uh, all right, so here's your – Here's your first. Here's your first five, bud. As uh, as uh, Cincinnati goes against Milwaukee, Anthony D. Scalfani against Brett Anderson for Milwaukee. I'm not taking the first five today. No, you know, you are, the, the streak is broken. So okay. if I need to win anywhere, though, I am winning to Cincinnati. De Scalfani is a pitcher who I actually think is mediocre. I don't think he's that bad, and I've never been a Brett Anderson guy. But Milwaukee's no. offense without Kane is inconsistent, and the Reds' offense. They showed up yesterday. Are they going to show up again? I don't know. But Cincinnati tends to do pretty well against Milwaukee and Miller Park. So I'm going to lean to uh, when, it, when in doubt, when, when, it's, when it's a 50-50, which I think this game is, take the value of plus 103. Uh, small lean there towards the Reds as well. Uh, hey, break up the Marlins, man. It's the, uh, it's, it's the Marlins and the Mets. Uh, Mets minus 148. Marlins plus 137. On those nine. prices, is there any way we can not take the Marlins? Nine is your total. I, just, I thought the Mets would be like minus 120. Where minus 148. The Marlins are 7-1. and one. How do I not take the Marlins at plus 137? It's, uh, the Marlins are really – they're doing it well, dude. They're, they're scoring a few runs. And is Don Mattingly a good manager? I don't know. A lot of questions. A lot of stuff going on. I don't know. Uh, Josh Smith goes for – uh, the Miami Marlins, he is uh, – It's either him or Caleb – I mean, Caleb Smith? Hmm? No, I mean Josh Smith. It might be Caleb Smith because I know he was coming off the IL, so he might be pitching on Saturday. I don't know. Uh, you might want to check uh, which Smith is going to be pitching in this one. Well, I'm looking at a – Either I'm, or, though. I'm assuming we're in agreement all the values on Miami. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm going to – you take the arguably the hottest team in baseball, and you're going you're to give me a – Plus 130. Plus 137, yeah. Yeah. Well, Sorry, that's and yeah, I absolutely get burned. You know, I'm the first to admit that you know I don't Miami burned. Be doing it with, made you pretty penny this season. What's the, oh yeah, no question about it. Um, uh, now a game, uh, Scott, that only only a person from Baston could love, uh, the Red Sox because apparently they're still a thing. Uh, minus 123 against the G, the, the, the Jays, plus 113. I'm sticking with my new trend. I'm taking Toronto team total under. I'm not sure what it is. It's probably a, what, five, five and a half? Toronto team total under. Total went down from 11 to 10, so it's probably around five. Uh, four and a half, buddy. Four and a half each way. Look at that. Oh, it's minus 110 each way? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's juiced, it's juiced over both sides. Oh, so, so, what's the, so what's the under four and a half? Plus 100. Until, Even money, until, brother. Until they, I don't like godly, but until they burn me, I'm going to take the under. Okay. It's the same logic. Yeah, I'll, if I win, if I lose one, I'll stop doing it. But I've won what? Like, if you would keep doing Toronto unders, you probably won what? Six in a row? A lot. Yeah. They've, they've really, they've I'll, really take, been I'll take the team total under. I'm not, I'm, uh, you know, I, it's like you're really going to fade two, you're going to fade, you're going to, you're going to fade two terrible pitchers in a row, huh? With Godly. Truth is, until Toronto hits the ball, yeah. Toronto only scored, what, three runs yesterday in a game that Weber was starting? I know. I know. Uh, once, I feel like at some point I – I know that a bad pitcher makes hitting easier, but at what point do you think that it just turns into a mental thing? You just constantly about, look up at the scoreboard. About now. I'm just saying, you look, up, you look up the scoreboard every game and you have two runs by the eighth inning. Yeah, it was about two games ago, maybe. Uh, uh, I feel like Toronto yeah. at some point must realize, wow, we're kind of bad at hitting this baseball thing. 
I need to put my hand. I need to put my hand back on the stove to make sure it's hot. I'm going to take the Toronto Blue Jays at plus one thirteen. Okay. <laughs> in a two to in a two to one beatdown. I do not like Godly, but at the no, end of the day, no. I, think I think you'll agree with me that Toronto's offense has been a serious problem. This is a this is a one hundred and fifty five percent fade of Zach Godley. This is in no way backing the Toronto offense. Um, all right, heading west, buddy. Uh, Diamondbacks and Padres. Padres minus one seventy two. Huh? I'm going with the Padres. I'll go with I'll go with the first five run line. Minus one seventy two. Uh, what's the first five run line? Minus one twenty five. Give me a second, man. I let me let me let me preview the game. I'm trying to guess what I think the first five. Hold, hold your guess for a second. Minus one seventy two plus one fifty eight. Seven and a half is the total there, Scott. Seven What's and a half. First five run line. Kelly and Paddock. All right. Uh, first five run line. Oh, funny you should ask. Let me I said minus one twenty five. Let me take a look at that, Scott. That's uh, where I'm going. So. Oh, you already saw. You already saw. You already looked at it. No, I took a guess. The minus, minus uh, first five run line on uh, San Diego? Yeah. It's going to be a minus 120. Lay, lay that half. So and, close. I'm so close at 125. Lay that half and get, get, put your uh, oh, minus 120. I'm, I'm, a much big, I'm a much bigger believer in uh, 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 Chris Paddock than I am in Merrill Kelly. No, I, don't no think, I don't think Kelly's awful by any means, but Paddock is a future ace in the sport. Yeah, agreed. San Diego offensively has actually looked decent. I know that they always decent lead. I know they scored three runs yesterday. Arizona didn't score. Tatis is on fire right now. Yep. And they – the bullpen's terrible. So, give me the best starter in this matchup with the team with the better offense right now, and I'll take him in minus 120. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. I think San Diego may be second, second or third in, in, in baseball in scoring. They have a top five offense in terms of runs per game. Yeah, they really do. And then they, uh, they give a, up – You know, a true testament to Petco Park, right? They, yeah, they give you know, that the, the the launching pad at Petco. Yeah, the launching pad at Petco. Uh, I'll take. Uh, mm, 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 I don't. I don't know how you can really go against Paddock in this spot. Oh, oh God! I'm so tempted by that over. I'm t- seven and a half is such a is such a sucker. Is such a sucker number for this game. At Petco, yeah, it's a sucker number. I've taken so many over the years. I've taken so many over seven and a half at at San Diego. Just thinking. These pitchers are bad. And then you look over. Oh yeah, it's Petco. That's right. The final score is going to be three one. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the juice and take the Padres over three and a half. You get the team total over three and a half at minus one forty five. I'll I'll lay that juice. Okay. I'll lay. That's fine. Yeah, I'll do that. Mm. Okay. Um, Rockies Mariners. Um, I think we got to go back to the Rockies, right? You got two pitchers who nobody really knows. One pitcher looks like he's from the novel Julius Caesar. Uh, and uh, I'm going to lean to the Rockies on this one. You got, uh, uh, yeah, for the, uh, for the Rockies, you've got uh, Ryan uh, Castellani, who is uh, yet to make a start this season. And you've got, on the other hand, you've got uh, Nick Margavius, who is yet to make a start this year. He looks like he was a member of the Roman Empire. Yeah. And he is a, a, a lot of, the name looks that way, too. Um, well, I meant the name. I don't yeah, know, yeah, I don't absolutely. know what it like personally, but yeah, yeah. You give you give me. Uh, I'll take the Rockies. Yeah, uh, ten the ten and three. They won two. They're playing good baseball. Um, again, uh, you, they, Seattle's trotting out a, a lefty, and you know, except for Charlie Blackman, everybody else is just a right-handed basher on this uh, Colorado. Squad. Blackman's batting like three ninety. Monster, monster game in and three hit three hits yesterday. Monster. Um, I'm yeah, I'm taking. I'll go back to the well. Give me the Rockies plus 100. Yeah, that sounds not, like a good deal not, there. Not quite as much value as yesterday. but uh, Seattle hasn't been as awful as I thought there would be, but that doesn't change the fact this team can't pitch. Yeah, I'm, I'm making that my play of the day, by the way. I'm, I'm doing it again, bud. Okay. I'm, I'm, on, this, I'm on this Rockies team. Uh, Giants, Dodgers, 305-278. Uh, I know it's Kershaw going against – You're not Kershaw. attracted by the minus 325 money line on the Dodgers? Johnny Cueto, how I love you. Uh, I don't see any. I don't see. I, I see no value here. Um, I would lean to Dodgers score first if I really wanted to find value. Okay. Even, even that's probably minus one fifty. Like I, you can't play this. Uh, yeah, you could be play the run line at minus one fifty five. Um, you know what? Actually, I don't know if you have this access, but first five team total under for the Giants. I don't. It's um, probably one and a half. But Kershaw has killed the Giants in his entire career. And he's, and he's great to start off seasons. And he has 
one of the lowest op- uh, first start of the season's ERA is in the league. He already had his first start. He gave him no runs. But the Giants aren't a great offense, even though Donovan Solano is batting 436, so which is just okay. absurd. But pitcher, pitcher uh, out, yeah. I'll take the first five under there for uh, the Giants team total because I think Kershaw – could have another very solid performance in this matchup. So the first five is four and a half. So you, so you it's go, gonna be you two go. and a, it's gonna be two and a half, one and a half. Yeah, two you have to be two and a half, one and a half. Uh, I'll take the under with the Giants. Boy, that's okay. That's a five it's not off. great, but if you're looking at a game that has a minus three twenty money line, yeah. Under one and a half will probably get you around minus one twenty five. That that's the only somewhat line I find playable. God, I'm drinking a lot of juice today. I'm, I'll, I'll I'm juice. not playing. I'm not playing that game because there's no value. But if I, I, play, I, I if I had to, I'd play the run line. Yo, yo. Mine, if I, you know, What's I, that? Like minus one fifty. I'm like you. I despise a run line at minus one fifty five. But the Dodgers are so much better. Aquato is a. Uh, is he's 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 done. If, well, you know that's what worries me about the first five because Cueto can pitch three or four good innings. No, I'm taking the first five team total under for the Giants. Yeah, I know that's what. But I mean, where to be about taking any kind of? Oh action. yeah. I wouldn't take the first five. Here. Plus, the Giants' bullpen is not great. So, I, I think, I think taking the first five in these type of games doesn't make any sense because if you have the much better team, why would you not just prefer to have nine innings of work instead of – I can just see it now. They walk somebody, Solano comes up in the third inning, hits a two-run homer, and you're screwed. Could happen. Talk about, you talk about no margin for error there, buddy. That's mm-hmm. a – that's a big balls play right there, my friend, playing team total. It's totally. not a real play. It's a lean. But if you're looking at minus 325 and I can find one play for minus 125, Good enough. I'm, I'm going to take it. Yeah, I get that. I get that. All right. So uh, what's your favorites today, bud? Uh, well, I have a play of the day on my personal favorite. Okay. But that's on my play of the day video. Uh, okay. I'm, going, I'm going back to the well on uh, Cleveland first five under because okay. it's been a money-making machine. I agree with you about the Rockies money line. That's going to be my second one. And my third one, is my play that I really going to be backing Zach Godley? Like, am I losing my mind here? Uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to take the under six in the uh, Yankees Ray, uh, Rays first game of the doubleheader. Okay. Under six. All right, I'm going to play the oh, – Colin uh, Glass now are just too attractive for me not to take the under there. I'm going to work out my doubleheader theory. I'm going to play the uh, the under nine and a half on the Tigers game. Um, I like the uh, – I like, um, of course, the, the Colorado game uh, very much. And, uh, yeah, give me the Orioles plus 166. I'm fading, fading Austin both at a good price. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay, there you go, bud. So that's the show. Hey, we're off tomorrow. How about that? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and we, for those of you that were looking for our NASCAR show, because there was a Saturday race, there's no Sunday lines up. And we were going to do one like that would have come up after the race actually started. And that kind we of didn't have the lines. So we thought it was a waste of time. Yeah. So anyway, we'll be back next week and do our, doing our NASCAR show when they get back to their regular schedule. So for all of you looking for NASCAR, we're taking a week off there. Sorry guys. Um, anything else, Scott? Uh, no, I'm looking forward to watching some sports and hopefully I'll be entertained for the next, I don't know, uh, 13, 13 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right, buddy. Uh, for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at winnersandwiners.com, of course, don't forget to check out winnersandwiners.com for deep dives into not just the baseball, but every sport going on in America every single day. You want the UFC stuff. They got stuff over there. Uh, you want the uh, hockey. Yep. Got that. You want some basketball? Of course. So, yeah, check out winnersandwiners.com, our sister site, statsalt.com. Uh, we love what we do here, man. Have a, we're having a blast. And uh, I know Scott, Scott and I doing today in sports betting is one of the highlights of my day. So, uh, for, for both of us, uh, to you guys, hopefully you'll uh, uh, keep, keep watching. We appreciate it. Tell your friends. Drop us a comment, as always. And, um, yeah, there you go. That's it. Have a great day. Good luck on all of your plays, not just today, but tomorrow as well. We'll be back on Monday to talk about it on today in sports betting. You guys take care. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.